Lack of enthusiasm for the two likely 2024 contenders is palpable. Here's what Utah Senator Mitt Romney's thoughts are on the presidential race. Who do you like in the Republican field? Uh, anybody. Um, you know, I, I would uh, I'd be happy to support virtually any one of the Republicans, maybe not Vivek, but uh, but the others that are running would would be acceptable to me and I'd be happy to vote for them. I'd be happy to vote for a number of the Democrats, too. I mean, it would be an upgrade from, in my opinion, from uh, Donald Trump and and perhaps also from uh, Joe Biden. I, look, I like President Biden. Um, you know, I, I find him a very charming engaging person. There's some places I agree with him, but most places I disagree with him. Uh, I think he's made all sorts of terrible mistakes, but uh, I, I would like to see someone else run. So uh, that was picked up, obviously, by um, by Vivek Ramaswamy, that uh, Romney basically said he'd support anyone but Vivek. Um, I think that's pretty telling, um, you know, from the Romney perspective. It's really personal, I think, for Romney, his feud with, uh, with Trump. Um, he, you know, he says he also doesn't like Biden's policies, but it's, you know, it's not clear what policy break he wants to make from the current establishment. Um, you know, Vivek obviously has a very different foreign policy from a lot of the people on the debate stage on the Republican side, including Nikki Haley, with whom he sparred a lot over U.S. commitment to funding endless war in Ukraine, also to some extent Israel, although uh, Vivek is somewhat supportive of continuing to fund Israel, uh, not nearly as supportive as Nikki Haley is. Um, so it's interesting. You know, Romney is not a popular figure on the right anymore. It's, it's in fact, he's, I think, widely despised by kind of MAGA people for perceived betrayals of Donald Trump. No one's really, I think no one outside of the establishment media at this point is really calling for him to weigh in. But it's interesting regardless. What's your takeaway? I'm trying to figure out why Romney maybe chose Vivek as the one candidate he didn't like. And a part of me is like, well, you know, Romney's a Bain Capital guy. He was big in management consulting, capital investments. And then you have Vivek Ramaswamy criticizing Vanguard State Street, BlackRock, calling them the worst cartel in human history. I think the beef could be ideological, but I also think it might just be because Vivek is a bit annoying. I think being likable as a candidate is very important. Being someone people want to listen to is important. And Vivek is a little bit insufferable, just a little bit cringe. And I know that it's a very basic take, but I think that could possibly be why Romney does not support him. But I do think that there is a group within the Republican Party that likes Romney, that appreciates what he says. You know, these kinds of more mainstream conservatives that have been on occasion never Trumpers. But for Romney to say that there's no one in the Republican field he doesn't like besides Vivek is surprising to me. I was expecting him to say something about not wanting another Trump presidency, about not wanting you know, the controversy, about a return to normal conservatism. But we didn't get that from him. He said he really likes anyone besides Vivek, which was surprising to me that Trump wasn't a name that was discussed right afterwards. Yeah, I, I'm sure I, I would, I would guess that Vivek, at least among real conservatives, Vivek is more popular for sure than Mitt Romney. You're right that Mitt Romney is enduringly popular uh, among the kind of, you know, very small never Trump contingent that is at this point just basically Democrats. Actually, Romney said he would, right, he would rather vote for a Democrat than, uh, than Vivek and certainly than Donald Trump. Romney also in that interview said that um, he thinks independent candidates are, are a bad idea. They're likely to elect Trump and that that would be devastating for the country and the character. Um, I find that interesting because, to some extent, it's just not true. Uh, we have an independent candidate in the race, RFK Jr., whom polling so far has consistently showed is, um, is, is chipping away not at, at Biden's support, not helping to elect Trump, but actually hurting Trump a little bit. And again, to be clear, I think that's fine. I think as many independent candidates want to run, that's absolutely fine. No one is, is, is owed your vote. if. RFK Jr. costs Trump the election, so be it. If he costs Biden the election, so be it. Don't care. I'm totally fine with it. But right now, it certainly is the case that the main independent candidate is hurting Trump a little bit, hurting him more than Biden. So Romney has that, like, just that's just factually not true. That's totally backward. <laughs> and we also have Romney, when he said he's not running again, basically said, you know, we need someone younger in office. But he doesn't want the young people to pick them, evidently. 
R- Rami is still in the political conversation. He says he's not running for office, but he's definitely still running his mouth. For him to say that we shouldn't have an independent candidate is him basically saying, you should have a younger candidate, but from one of the main parties, either a Democrat or a Republican, not an independent. So basically he wants it to be a young candidate, but not someone picked by young people, because that's exactly what this is. Young people like independent candidates. Young people don't really appreciate the mainline Democrats. They don't appreciate the mainline Republicans. I think it's it's kind of naive to say something like, you know, we need a young guy in there. We need to make room for young people, but not expect young people to be a factor in the decision making process and who that candidate is. It feels very paternalistic. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, young Republicans, I think, like Vivek, I think he speaks their language better in terms of, um, uh, well, for not just foreign policy, which I already discussed, but also uh, cancel con- culture. He and um, people like Candace Owens have uh, have uh, denounced some of the ex- extreme deplatforming efforts um, uh, considered or countenanced by conservatives in response to the anti-Israel uh, protesters, where Vivek and Candace Owens, for example, said that's going too far. You know, let's criticize them, but you know, let's not unperson them. We don't want that to happen to conservatives either. I think he gets, you know, obviously he's been a leader on the anti woke discord. Um, I think he better understands where the the young right vote is at. Um, I think he gets that a lot better than a Mitt Romney type person or than any of the other people, frankly, in the race. Your Nikki Haley's, your Chris Christie sees, your Chris Christie sees. <laughs> I, I just pluralized uh, Chris Christie's name in a way that was interesting. Um, and uh, Ron DeSantis and Trump. What's that? He's multiplying. There are multiple Chris Christie's. Yeah, we're, yeah we'll avoid the any uh, further joking in that regard. Um, so anyway, if, if you are interested in what Mitt Romney has to say, also, of course, he, he sounds like he's ruling out an independent bid for the White House himself. Uh, you know, that gets talked about him teaming up with Joe Manchin and having this kind of... Um, centrism candidacy for I don't know for absolutely no one for people who just want centrism I don't know that I don't know that that kind of voter exists outside of cable news or establishment media or or and so on um, but at, Rom, at least according to Romney that's not going to happen and you have Nikki Haley climbing in the polls up at nine percent showing against Joe Biden she would likely win um, I think that's fascinating. I also think it's fascinating that you have a candidate like Marion Williamson showing that she could win in a general election. Also climbing in the polls, not that much a part of the conversation. But Mitt Romney is, of course, the kind of guy to say, well, independence, bad idea to run independent candidates. But he's also the kind of guy to completely dismiss a candidate like Marianne Williamson. He wouldn't be happy with a Marianne Williamson candidacy. And it's not really about the partisanship. It's not really about how he loves the two-party system. He loves the power of centrism that the two-party system provides. He would hate for Marianne Williamson to be up in the polls for the Democrats and to be the likely nominee. These kinds of candidates that are very centrist, that are very free market candidates, they want corporations to continue buying up our land and resources and selling them back to us at an extremely high rate that is just bankrupting working class families. He doesn't like the candidates that stand against that. Like I said, he came up through Bain Capital. His way of thinking about politics is very much tied to economic policy making. You can't divide the two. I think that's a big reason why he's critical of anyone who's a little bit more radical than the two-party system because they threaten the status quo. And so I think Romney, in his heart of hearts, wouldn't love a Democrat, Marianne Williamson, just as much as he wouldn't love an RFK Jr. independent. Hmm. We'll have more rising right after this.